You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. You can find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live uncommon. It is October, almost. In my mind, it's October. It's almost October. Almost. And, and it's that, very close. That means that it is time to to gather and to learn, especially with our friends from Lutherans for Life. Joining us today, the Reverend Michael Salamink, Executive Director for Lutherans for Life. Pastor Salamink, welcome to the Coffee Hour. Good morning, Coffee Hour host and hostess. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we need some pastry treats. Now. That's what I was going to say. Coffee and hostess makes me think of treats and yep. now I'm hungry. Pastries. <laughs> but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the Lutherans for Life conference. It's coming up very soon, October 21st and October 22nd in Rock Island, Illinois. What happens at a Lutherans for Life conference, Pastor? Well, speaking of treats, we <laughs> warmly invite everybody to attend because it is going to be a real one at Rock Island in Illinois. We've not been able actually to have a national conference for a couple of years because of the pandemic. So it's been since 2018. We usually alternate national conferences and regional conferences. And so 2020 would have been our national conference year. But extenuating circumstances kept us apart. We're very excited to get back together. It's going to be a day and a half of gathering together for fellowship and encouragement, expert educational sessions, celebration of the sanctity of life, worship, and a lot of learning and talking with people who are coming from around the country as gospel-motivated voices for life. You mentioned regional conferences. What is the difference between what happened? Is there a difference between what happens at a regional conference and the national conference? There is. At our regional conferences, they usually begin with a devotion in the morning. They last until about three or four o'clock in the afternoon. So they take place at different areas around the country. Attendance is usually a little bit less, and we're not able to have the time to have a full-on worship service. So when we have our national conferences like we're having in Rock Island on October 21 and 22, we're able to gather together for worship in the evening of the first day. That's a Friday. And after worship, then we have a banquet with a keynote speaker. This year's keynote is going to be Melissa Odin, who is a survivor of abortion. Her mother, when she was pregnant, underwent a procedure that was not successful, thanks be to God. And so 40 some years ago, Melissa was born. And she has a wonderful story to tell about her experiences, about connecting and reconciling with her mom, and about her advocacy, both in the United States and around the world. So those are a couple of the really exciting things that can happen at national conference, the corporate worship, the banquet, the keynote speaker, but we also get a larger amount of time. And then at our national conferences, in addition to our keynote, we get to have a wide variety of breakout sessions as well. So who usually gathers together? We talked about the, the regional and the national who attends a, a Lutherans for Life conference? Lutherans for Life, of course. <laughs> Our entire <laughs> nationwide network of gospel-motivated voices for life. So Lutherans for Life is a nationwide organization. We're not just a think tank publishing house and a staff. We also have over 100 volunteer communities across the country and literally tens of thousands of members and donors who support our cause. Those are the folks that we gather together with. So Lutherans for Life veterans who have been with us for our entire 44 year history. Young people, we have a couple of college groups that are gonna come join Lutherans for Life. Families can come and join us. Folks from surrounding congregations. We get people from around the country. We've had folks from as far away as Alaska come to our national conferences, but anybody who is interested in not just the sanctity of life, but the sanctity of life from a Lutheran, distinctively gospel-motivated perspective. So bringing that message of joy and hope into the cultural conversations that often take place in anger and fear, people who understand that God creates, redeems, and calls every human being to be his own precious treasure from fertilization to forever, and people who want to speak that truth and show that love with courage and compassion in a way that is eloquent and winsome so that we can change hearts 
hearts and save lives with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the kind of folks that we gather together. So you mentioned the banquet speaker. Who are some of the other main speakers and and breakout session speakers that that we'll be able to hear for people who are going to the conference? This is so cool, Sarah, because it is our first national conference in a couple of years. We've actually booked three, three keynote speakers. So in addition to Melissa, Melissa, who I mentioned, who is internationally renowned, we'll also be welcoming Jeannie Mancini, who is the president of the National March for Life that takes place every January in Washington, D.C. I'm sure folks will be very interested to hear what she has to say now that the era of Roe v. Wade has passed. Of course, Roe v. Wade was the occasion for beginning that March for Life in Washington, D.C. For many years, that march has been more of a celebration really than a protest. And so this year, when we gather together in Washington, D.C., the celebration will be more joyful than ever. And Jeannie's going to talk to us about not just what's going to happen in 2023, but how the March for Life is working together with a variety of locations throughout the United States to continue their future of advocating for the sanctity of life. And then our third keynote speaker is nationally syndicated conservative talk radio host, Steve Dace, who has presented in our conferences before, but he also comes from the state of Iowa right next to Rock Island, Illinois. So a local fellow who's going to join us and give us his entertaining and interesting perspective on the sanctity of life. And we've got, it really would take too much time for me to run down all of the breakout sessions that we have. We have 16 of them planned. Nizable names such as Dr. Greg Seltz, who heads up the Lutheran Center for Religious Liberty in Washington, D.C. Father Frank Pavone, who is the leader of the Catholic pro-life organization Priests for Life. We're welcoming the president of the Association of Free Lutheran Congregation Seminary and Bible College, Wade Mobley, CPH author Kim Markshausen. Some of the topics that we're going to cover include human trafficking, Instagram, TikTok, and cancel culture, how to engage Gen Z in life ministry. We're going to have a medical professional talk to us about how we are intricately knitted together in our mother's womb. We're going to hear from someone who made a personal journey from being pro-choice to now being for life. We're going to hear about how we can address racism in light of critical race theory and how the gospel helps us heal racial divides in America. We're going to hear about how to speak with courage when gospel-motivated voices are facing opposition and persecution. And then we're going to hear about how to engage in activities on the ground, how people can take action to advocate the sanctity of life and reach out to our vulnerable and marginalized neighbors. So there's so much information that folks won't even be able to digest at all, bound to find something that interests everybody. Those sound like deeply engaging topics. And I, I saw the lineup of presenters for these sessions and workshops. And some of them have, have been guests here on the Coffee Hour before as well. And mm -hmm. so I know that it's going to be just a, a great opportunity to dig in deep to some of these topics and really learn a lot, engage in and great conversations too. I'm sure that happen between the sessions as well. I remember the last time that I attended a Lutherans for Life conference and the opportunity to meet so many other like-minded Lutherans regarding the, this matter, this issue of life. Tell us, how do we how do we attend the, the Lutherans for Life conference in Rock Island, Illinois? All the information you need is on the website, www.lutheransforlife.org. There's a conference tab right at the top of the page that'll take you to a link where you can get more information about travel and lodging, also where you can register to be a part of it. You can do it all online. I do want to just echo what you said about folks being able to gather together and to share with one another. We actually build that kind of sharing time into our itinerary and agenda for the day and a half so that people can share their own gospel-motivated reflections for life. There's a lot of opportunities because... Um, this year, unlike previous national conferences, we are going to have the entire conference take place at the same hotel where folks can stay. So that's exceptionally convenient. We've gotten a great rate from the property for folks to be able to book their lodging there. So everybody will be kind of gathered together in the same space, coming and going, worshiping and learning together. So it really is going to be a much needed, refreshing time for fellowship and people to connect. 
So if people have never been to one of these conferences before, maybe they're inspired by all of the things that have been happening in the really just in the last year with a pro-life movement and, and things. What are some other reasons, some encouragement for people to to book their uh, registration and, and lodging? If you'd like to meet other people who share our sanctity of life convictions, if you'd like to hear updates on trends and events that are happening related to the sanctity of life, not just across our country, but around the world, if you'd like to understand how the sanctity of life doesn't just concern abortion, surprise pregnancy, and the unborn, but how it encompasses a wide variety of circumstances and situations. Of course, if you look forward to visiting new places, if you want to meet new people, if you want to just become more active or go back to your community with ideas on how you can lead, inspire, educate, and activate more people around you. Lutherans for Life is the premier Lutheran Sanctity of Life conference and organization. And this one's going to be fantastic. We've already got hundreds of people registered for that. Very good. Lutheransforlife.org. You can find the conference tab at the top of the page, taking place Friday, October 21st and Saturday, October 22nd in Rock Island, Illinois. For those not familiar with Rock Island, <laughs> Illinois, Pastor, give us some clues. Zero us in on to how to find Rock Island, Illinois. I would love to do that, especially because Rock Island is located about 45 minutes from where I grew up in eastern Iowa. So Rock Island is part of the Quad Cities, a minor metropolitan area on the border of Iowa and Illinois, right there along the uh, Mississippi River. So coming from Chicago, it's about two and a half hours. From St. Louis, it's about four hours. There is an airport located within driving distance from the conference location, an international airport, you can, Quad Cities International Airport that you can fly right into, or it's easy enough to fly into O'Hare in Chicago and take about a two hour drive on the road. For folks, it's centrally located right in the middle of the country. So kind of the geographic heart of America and of Lutheranism. Lutheransforlife.org. You can find the conference tab at the top and learn more about the Lutherans for Life conference taking place Friday, October 21st and Saturday, October 22nd in Rock Island, Illinois. Our guest today, the Reverend Michael Salamink, Executive Director for Lutherans for Life. Sing, thanks so much, Pastor Salamink, for being our guest on the Coffee Hour. Thank you guys for your support and the opportunity to share with folks about this exciting event that's coming up. You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. <laughs>